If you had the power to totally change your relationship with your body, your relationship with others, your career, and make a difference to the world, what would that mean to you? You are an energy field. You have an energy body. You are that energy body. And today we are being joined by Professor Konstantin Korotkov, who is the world pioneer in the science of energy fields. And if you're a healer, this is going to be absolutely an amazing interview for you. And if you're new to healing, prick your ears up and pay attention. You're watching the Energy Healing Podcast. So before we get started, make sure you subscribe to this channel. And if you like this interview, click the like button and make sure you share. Not so long ago, I interviewed the world's pioneer in the study of consciousness, the study of energy. And that is Professor Konstantin Koroskov. He's written a number of books as a pioneer of a technology called the EPC and the GDV. And books include Light After Life. So this is a book that I've got, of course, um, which I strongly recommend you get. And The Energy of Consciousness. If you can get hold of that, that's amazing. And even when I wrote my own book, my very first book back in 2011, he was kind enough to endorse that as well. The interview that you're going to hear is from something I did just over a year ago. And uh, excuse my goatee because it's a bit more shorter. And I hope you enjoy the interview. What is energy? And the other question is, what is consciousness? What's, what, what's the difference between the two so that people understand fully? First of all, energy, it is physical notion. And as a classical physicist, I uh, stay on uh, background, classical background. So energy, it's in physics, it's the most common denomination of all movements and events in the world. So everything that we see around ourselves, any movement, any situation, it needs energy. And it may be evaluated by energy. If we move our body, if we move our hand, it is energy. If we think, it is energy. When we have volcano eruption, it is energy. When we have stars moving in the universe, it is energy. So in physics, all other notions of physics we can derive from energy. And we have now quite clear understanding what does mean human energy, what types of energy we have around ourselves. So in physics, and in biophysics, we have this very clear established. Absolutely different situation with consciousness. In modern science, there are no notion of consciousness. If you look to books of physics, chemistry, biology, you would never find the definition of consciousness. Of course, if you take books on psychology, then there are many different definitions of consciousness. But they are different. But I always had a very simple question. What's the difference between my consciousness and consciousness of my cat? Because I have no doubts that all of people who have pets, cats, dogs, horses, they understand those animals, they do have consciousness. And in my books, I introduce the idea of multi levels of consciousness, starting from the first level the level of simple biological subjects that just ex ex accept information from the environment and respond to this information. And we understand that any cell in our body, any simple organism in nature, any plant has this type of consciousness. So it is the way how we interact with the environment. We see information and reaction, reaction to this. But this is the first, the first level of consciousness because we have many other levels. We have the level of clever animals that may not only respond to the changing environment, but predict something. And any dog can predict what would be if they communicate with their master in this way or that way. It was shown that dogs are waiting for their masters when they come home, same as cats. You know that cats and dogs, if they're taken away from home, uh, it was many cases when they're coming back home, same with horses, same with some other animals. So 
So it's next level of consciousness, you understand? But only we humans can accumulate some new knowledge and transfer this knowledge to new generations. I'm just wondering if a cat or a dog is aware of its owner coming home. It's not thinking about it. Something in its field is saying, my owner's coming back home. Do humans have that ability as well? Yes, we do have it, but it is suppressed. Because uh, we have many other functions in our life and many other important layers. And plus, very important, we are collective beings. We are a part of group of society. As um, Homo sapiens, we can't exist without this group. You know that uh, very important cases when um, people was left somewhere in jungles or in some deserts or in islands, even if they had a lot of food, they was unable to survive. They either were dying or becoming mad. So it means that we spend a lot of our consciousness subconsciously on supporting this connection with society. That's why we had to lose some abilities just to gain something else. And of course, some people have very developed intuition, mostly women. Women have much more developed intuition compared to men. But most of people, they lost it. It's possible to develop, possible. But still, of course, as we don't need it in everyday life, then it's, for most people, it's just lost. With an animal knowing its owner gonna re returning home, is it a linear time thing or does it transcend time and space? No, I don't think it's uh, something that's uh, related to time and space. I don't think so. I think it's much more simple. We know that uh, now we have a lot of proof that we can communicate with each other uh, at the distance, telepathically, we can send intentions through distance. We can record emotions. We can record uh, meditation at the distance. And uh, from my point of view, the best explanation would be uh, different quantum effects. Because we know that our body on the lower level operates on quantum principles. And what does it mean quantum? Electrons, photons, protons, those are quantum particles and they can behave as material particles in our material world, or they can simultaneously behave as quantum particles. There are many theories now that our brain operates on quantum principles. It's not just uh, simple mechanical or chemical. Because we, if we go to this question that we need to understand, first level is quantum. Next level of our human behavior, it is uh, fields level of frequency, level of fields. Only next level, those are chemical. So modern medicine um, mostly deal on chemical level. And only recently we start transforming to field level. And only just, just very new research and applications, it's a level of uh, quantum. Because you know that now more and more popular is uh, to pay attention to mitochondria. And mitochondria is quantum device. It breaks on quantum principles. So all treatment related to treatment of mitochondria activity is quantum treatment. And it's quite new. So that is why when we talk about uh, ability of dogs, when we talk about telepathy, when we talk about intuition and influence of intuition, meditation, and uh, possibility to direct it with different sensors, we deal with, from my point of view, with quantum topics. Of course, there are some discussion about uh, uh, space-time, but it's much more complicated, still it's just uh, most uh, only discussions. We're energy beings. I read once upon a time, uh, I can't remember this research, I actually wrote about it, which is they took a salamander egg, so it's a small lizard for those of you who don't know, it's a salamander egg, and they assume the energy field given off by the salamander egg will be a very little baby <laughs> energy field. But they actually found that the energy field of the salamander egg was one of an adult salamander. Now, how is that possible? Uh, you mean that when we talk about energy field, when mm -hmm. the, that's the, it's the skeleton of all other structures. And if we talk about embryos, the development of embryos, very well, 
developed concept that is based on, on fields. The first, this concept was in embryogenesis, was uh, developed by Alexander Gurvich in Russia. He, uh, it was proposed by him, but he developed this as a theory. And in 1945, he published a book, uh, Biological Field, The Biological Field where he proposed his concept of embryogenesis. That is why uh, this is quite uh, developed idea and it's well supported now because we think that it's not just chemicals that allow from little cell to develop to the organism, but it is some force, some field that are based on, of course, organism of the mother or in the egg it is based on the structure of the whole egg. And this field allows organism to develop in a grown-up system. So that is why uh, we think that, and we believe, and we have some experiments also, like with this salamander experiment uh, and many other, that uh, it is really the field. I can give you a very clear example. Uh, we had very interesting, and we have his still life, uh, very interesting scientist in Russia. His name is Kan Chen Zhan. He is Chinese, living in Russia for all his life. And he did very interesting experiments. He took eggs of hen uh, and uh, goose, and he put them nearby. But the difference was, for some goose, eggs was in latest stage of development. Hen, eggs, was the chicken was just in early stage of development. And after some time, this goose was just coming out of the egg, it was a normal goose. But when chicken came out, they had goose beak. No. Yes, 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 yes. Some of them goose paws. Wow. And it is a repeatable experiment and vice versa, of course. You can make right. It. Wow, that's absolutely mind-blowing. Okay, wow. How fast can our thoughts affect our energy field? Immediately. Of course, this is immediate effect. It takes just less than millisecond. And not only energy field, it reflects all our uh, system. And you know that, uh, in principle, our system responds before we have this thought coming to our brain. Because I mean that we have our third in subconscious brain first, and only then it uh, uh, come to the hemispheres, to the frontal lobe. So it was shown that we respond before our third come to frontal lobe, before we understand this. Third. So it was again repeatable experiments. Does the energy field affect thoughts? Yes, of course, of course, because we uh, communicate with each other by energy field. We feel people, other people. We feel situation. The most known, of course, the gaze from the back. You see, it's very well known effect, and it's repeatable as well, it's proven, uh, but there are many other situations. Many cases when you go to some place and you feel this is good or this is bad for you. Many cases when you feel something around yourself. So we are under the constant influence of information from outside in particular energy fields. Mm. But of course, we respond first of all subconsciously by the, our old brain, ancient brain, only then sometimes it comes to our uh, frontal lobe. When an energy field is disrupted, so it's broken up, I mean, what, what's the consequences of that? Energy field is like a skeleton of all the body function. Every organ and system in our system has its own frequency. It's like a music. And can imagine, we have orchestra playing under the guidance of a good conductor. And it's beautiful music. But when conductor is not very good, or when conductor is absent, when some uh, player is not playing good or out of tone, you see this and you hear that oh, something is wrong. So same going on with our body. If something is out of resonance, then first of all, we see this an energy field. We see this predominance, the disruption of energy field. So on physical level, it may be okay, everything. But if we see this on energy field, and if we 
not corrected beforehand, then finally it would come to a chemical level and finally it would come to a level of symptoms and problems. I've, I've seen in situations before where somebody's taken a reading, they told the person who they took the reading from that they are likely to have a heart attack if they don't pay attention to their health. It was really, is, is that possible? Is that really possible that you can see heart attack and other diseases in your field? And then maybe very sh uh, shortly afterwards, they manifest that into reality? You see, we have hundreds of cases of this kind with many practitioners, professionals, doctors who, do, who are doing this on the everyday practice. Because it doesn't mean that you can predict heart attack, no. We can see weak areas of the body, most vulnerable areas. And it means that in case of some uh, overload, in case of stress, in case of some poisoning or uh, some uh, negative response of the body, then in this particular weak area, we may have problems. Uh, now, for example, it's shown that heart attack and heart problems, it's not just because of the heart in most cases. Of course, we understand there are some people who predominantly have some problems with heart from child, uh, from birthday. That's another story. But for most people, it is related to uh, all cardiovascular system. So it means blood circulation in all the system. And clots in veins created not somewhere in the body mostly, but in the heart itself. And the most important, it is balanced between sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. That is related to stress. So that's why when we see some weak areas, we can define those areas. We can tell people what's going on. We can tell them what should be done because the goal not to predict some problem, but to avoid it. Mm. People are healthy. Get them to pay attention to an area that they may want to work on. So we have a lot of people who are healers and coaches and therapists, but particularly healers who are listening in, uh, working with energy. How does healing take place on an energetic level? So if I'm doing healing work on somebody, non-physical healing, and I'm working with energy, what's that healer doing? Uh, you see, I've been studying these healers and this phenomenon for many years. And uh, I came to understanding, and it's uh, written in my books, that there are not one principle, but there are many different levels of healing. And there are many different modalities of healing. And uh, the easiest modality is using your own energy, uh, laying hand, uh, touching hands, by hands, using transmitting your own energy to other person. Mm -hmm. And if you do it in a positive way, if you transmit positive energy, okay. if your field is embracing as a person, then of course, it, in many cases, it has very good. Next level is the level of sound and conscious, uh, I would say it, conscious uh, healing. When, for example, people pray, when they pray for other person, and we have many experiments uh, on big uh, group of populations, that in many cases, it has positive effects. So if there are people prayed for, in many cases, they have much better, uh, better healing process than in other, other people. And it is maybe one person, maybe may, many people, but it is like consciously trying to help person. And next level of healing, that is maybe the highest level, when people use not their own energy, not their own energy field, but they use some cosmic or spiritual energy, and they connect other person with this cosmic or spiritual energy. And they just ask this spiritual energy or cosmic energy to influence this other person. And then, of course, it may be done remotely. Of course, it may be done just without any uh, spending their own resources. And I know many healers in the world who are doing this. Is, is that measurable? Yes, of course, it's measurable. Of course. Oh, okay. So I, I want to ask this one question that really occupies my mind because I love it. Um, when you get two people who love each other, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, 
Is it measurable? Is it possible to see the energies transmit to each other or not? Is that, me is that something that you've measured or is it measurable? And first of all, we can measure the energy blast coming from one heart to another heart. So we did this type of experiments when people were separated, sitting in other places, different places, and one person was trying to send love to another person. And we've seen this, we was able to measure this physical blast of energy coming from one heart to another heart. It's one topic. Another topic, now we have a lot of observations, more and more. When we are measuring two people being in love, then we have so named energy diagram. It's a diagram that reflects uh, the energy profile for all organs and systems. Those energy diagrams of two people, they match each other exactly. For me, it's amazing. Uh, just so, okay, repeat that last bit, the energy diagram, diagram what does it do? You see. Uh, just uh, latest, one of the latest example. We have good friends in Russia, and those are people who live together for 30 plus years. And uh, I've been measuring gentlemen in 2016. And the lady I've been measuring from time to time, the latest was just a couple of months ago in 2018. And when uh, we superpose their diagrams, they match each other exactly. So all the peaks of the diagram, they match each other. And it's many cases of this kind. So it means that when people live together, when they laugh together, it may be people living together for one month or living together for 40 years, then their energy field come to resonance. They become like one being. They resonance with each other. They feel each other. They feel each other at the distance, and it is reflected on our measurement. So it is very interesting observation for me. I'm showing you at the whole seminars, at the okay. conferences. What happens with our energy, our presence, when we pass away, when we die? So in other words, does consciousness survive death? Of course, it's a very complicated topic, and uh, there are studies, but of course, it's only a preliminary, I would say, study, even if we have maybe hundreds of papers published on this topic. But uh, I believe that our death is just a threshold when we pass from one dimension to another dimension. It was confirmed by our experiments, and I have a book on this topic, uh, Light After Life. It is confirmed by many cases of communication with assessed people. And uh, pro for, you know, Professor Gary Schwartz, Schwartz in Arizona, he is doing these experiments all the time. Uh, it is confirmed by many, many situations when we can see something uh, for people after death. So I believe that after death, it is separation of physical body and energy being, a spiritual being, or soul. It is so name, many names and they are different, but still they are related to one and the same situation. So we separate material stuff, it is left here, and it's rotten, it may be gone. And our informational stuff, informational being, spiritual being, is separated and it comes to another dimension. And it still exists in another dimension. How do we unlock and improve our receptiveness? We know very well that you can train your ability to feel information, to accept information. You can train your intuition. And there are very simple, many simple trainings. The first simple training as follows. You go to the forest, you try to see as many colors as you can. Because trees, they are not green. Snow, it's not white. There are so many different colors. For example, people living in far north of uh, Russia, in, when there are, they have winter for 10 months a year, they have 36 words for color of snow, because it's totally different. Any professional skier know that snow is very different in different stations. Same with color. So the first simple exercise, try to go to the forest in the springtime, now it's spring, and see as much, as many colors as you want, as you can. And you understand that day by day, you will see more and more shades, more and more colors of green. Then next topic, of course, 
try to make details, to see details around yourself. Again, most uh, people, they don't pay attention to little details because we don't need it. We are based on our th ideas and our thoughts. We are just inside ourselves and we don't see what's going on around ourselves. So try to pay attention to this. Then, of course, there are many professional exercises of this kind we can use and it's in special training. And then it's possible to step by step uh, to be trained. But of course, another topic you need to understand, uh, why do you need it for? Why and what for? Do you really need it or not? That's another question. Let's put ourselves in a situation where you live with family or a community. And let's just say you're somebody, everyone here is very good person, they're kind hearted people but you're surrounded by one or two people who have got a lot of toxicity, a lot of, they're troubled. How does that, their energy field affect you? How does your energy field affect them? You know, in many countries, we have very clear understanding how pregnant lady should relate with other people, should uh, communicate with other people. And it's very well known that any negative information that come from outside, from other people, from negative environment, from negative even impression, influence baby. The development of the baby and further around the life of a baby. So it is the best known example, but it works for everybody. Mm. Mostly, uh, most dangerous is for doctors. And you know that we have a big problem with doctors burnout. Yes. Doctors have to accept Many people every day, my wife, she's a medical doctor, she knows very well, and there are some negative people who just suck out your energy, who have very negative influence, and one, two person per day can totally spoil situation for a person. So that's why it's a very serious problem. We live in society, and if you need, you have to communicate with people, depending, of course, on your profession, on your situation, then of course it makes uh, sometimes situation very difficult. Mm. That's why we understand it's a lot of people who are misanthropes, who don't want to deal with other people because mm. they are more, uh, they are mostly sensitive. Correct, correct. Okay, so, uh, and it applies to people who's particularly, not just doctors, but particularly people who are healers, working with people with depression and anxiety and issues like that. Now, is there, is there a way they can, we, as therapists, healers, we can protect our energy? Yes, of course. By meditation, by contacting with higher force, with higher universe, and by gaining power and strength from the higher universe. That's, the, the, to my mind, that's the only way how it may be done. Microwave ovens, are they good for you or not? A microwave. Microwave. Does that damage your energy field? No, it's dreadful. It's totally dreadful. Because microwave, first of all, it influences water, and we have water in our system. It creates a lot of uh, uh, negative uh, particles, a lot of uh, residuals, negative residuals. So it has very negative effect both on us and on food. Because all the stocks that microwave are totally safe, that's not true. They leak this microwave energy, and it's harmful for all life beings. Could it cause um, cancer or diseases like that, or do we not know that? No, we don't know this. Okay. Have, I haven't seen any proof of this. I've seen that if we put, of course, some animal inside this microbe, it, it dies immediately, very fast. But I have no proof that it was coming. What about these devices, telephones? Do they damage us? <laughs> yes, yes, I always tell that. Would these devices would be deadly, then most of the population on the earth would have been dead. Right. <laughs> we are alive. alive. And we are using those devices uh, everywhere, all of us, but no doubt that these devices has negative effects. No doubt. Because those are again frequency, and if people keep it nearby their head, having brain inside, then, of course, it's negative effect. But we have many ways how we can use it with earphones, on uh, loud speakers, 
uh, so it's keeping somewhere outside, so it's not so bad as it's sometimes talked about. Thank you ever so much. I really appreciate your time, your energy and effort. And um... I hope you found that interview of a use of benefit to you. Please put whatever you can into practice and really dig deep into the study of consciousness. If you are a healer and if you're not a healer, do it anyway, because you are an energy field. You can take ownership of your reality.